Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing topological manifolds. Okay, so in the previous video, what we saw is the definition of an n-dimensional topological manifold. So an n-dimensional topological manifold is a topological space for which it is possible to define an atlas. Now, an atlas is a collection of charts uh, which together cover the entire manifold. So the union of all of the chart domains of all the charts uh, gives you the entire manifold back again. Okay, and remember, these charts, these are just consisting of a chart domain, which is some open set from our manifold, uh, along with a chart map, which is a map from the chart domain into a subset of Rn, if we're talking about an n-dimensional topological manifold, that's an open subset of Rn, uh, and that map needs to be a topological homeomorphism. So basically, an n-dimensional topological manifold is a patchwork quilt of topological subspaces uh, which are all homeomorphic to open sets in Rn with the standard topology on it. Okay, uh, so the one-liner to summarise up what a topological manifold is, is that it's something that locally looks like Rn with the standard topology on it. Okay, so, what I'd like to do now in this video is I'd firstly like to discuss terminology, a bit more terminology, uh, and then we'll talk about chart transition maps to finish up with. Okay, so, um, terminology, the first thing I'd like to just make a comment on is why this terminology of atlas and chart. Well, the reason is that this is homologous to what we've been doing for the surface of the Earth for years. So the surface of the Earth is a two-dimensional sphere, okay, just like this. Uh, so it is indeed a two-dimensional topological manifold. And what have we been doing for years? We've been making these huge books called atlases, which are full of these pictures of little portions of the surface of the Earth. Okay, I hope you've seen one of these things before in your life. And we could call the little pictures of little parts of the surface of the Earth the charts. And then the entire book is the atlas. The collection of all the charts is the atlas. And overall, all of the charts cover the entire surface of the Earth, the entire two-dimensional topological manifold. Okay, so I hope you can see the uh, fact that actually we've been using this for years and years and years in the form of a... Uh, atlas of the surface of the Earth. So it's just really a generalisation of that, and that's where the terminology here comes from. The second piece of terminology that I'd like to now introduce, which we haven't used before, is the concept of coordinates uh, for a chart. Okay, so a chart gives the points in a chart domain coordinates with respect to that chart. Okay, and this is actually going to be extremely important. We're not going to make a huge thing of it in this video, we're just going to point it out in this video, but it becomes so, so important when you go on to differential geometry. Okay, because once you have coordinates for the points of a topological manifold, you can then suddenly start to do more things. Okay, you can start to suddenly use algebra. You can use the algebraic structure of Rm, the vector space structure that's very easy to put onto it. Okay, you can, if you've got maps between coordinate systems, you can start potentially to do calculus, okay, and that's where it all goes. So these are going to become so, so important. Right, um, so what firstly then are coordinates? So at the moment we've got our topological manifold, and I think actually what I'll do is go over onto the other page so that I can draw pictures here. So we're discussing coordinates. So we've got our topological manifold here, and let's continue with our example of the two-dimensional sphere here. Let's say we've got some chart domain here. So this is one of our chart domains, which we'll call U. So let's add some colour on here firstly. So here is our chart domain U. And let's say we've got some point in this chart domain P. Okay, so it, our atlas for our topological manifold, let's say, contains a chart U along with its chart map X. Okay, and this chart map X is going to map this chart domain U onto the image of U, which will be a subset of Rn, uh, sorry, of R2 specifically. Okay, so let's say it looks like here, over in R2. Now, all the points in R2, they have symbols representing them, and they are pairs of real numbers. Okay, so all the points in R2 have a pair of real numbers associated with them. So let's say it's here. So we've got x1, x2, two real numbers like so. So every point in our chart domain here will be being mapped by the chart map 
x here onto some point in the image of the chart domain x of u, this open subset of R2, okay, here, and this is a topological homeomorphism, that's what we know about this map. And by doing this, we will be associating with every single one of the points in this um, topological manifold, uh, of not, sorry, not topological manifold, every single one of the points in this chart domain will be associating them with a pair of real numbers uh, from R2 here. And this pair of real numbers, those are known as the coordinates of this point with respect to this chart. Okay, so both of the coordinates, both of these real numbers will be a function of which point you're at. So x1 and x2, these will both be functions of p. Okay, so they'll vary as you vary the point here. So you could describe these as real numbers, uh, which are real valued functions, which are uh, functions of which point you're at uh, in this chart main U here. Okay, and these are known as the coordinates. So the coordinates of this point P with respect to the chart that we've got here, that's what I mean by coordinates. Now note, this point P, it might not just be in one chart, it might not just be in the chart domain of a single chart. It might be the case that we've got another chart here. Oh, and I should draw these lines dashed rather than with the solid line. I apologize for that. Imagine that that's a dashed line rather than a solid line. And imagine this is a dashed line as well. Okay, uh, so P might be in another chart domain over here. And if it's in another chart domain, this chart domain will also have a chart map associated with it. And that chart map might associate completely different coordinates in R2 to that point. Okay, so a point in a topological manifold might appear in more than one chart domain. Okay, and therefore it might have different coordinates that it's being associated by the different chart maps. Uh, that's not a problem. Okay, so don't worry about that. All you have to be careful of is you have to say this point P has coordinates x1, P, x2, P with respect to the chart. Okay, so you must add the with respect to the chart UX because it might have different coordinates with respect to a different chart. So coordinates are with respect to the chart from the atlas. And even in one atlas, a point might have multiple different coordinates that it's being ascribed. Of course, you could completely change your atlas and then it would be ascribed completely different coordinates. So coordinates are utterly meaningless really. Okay, They're just a way of associating uh, the points of the topological manifold with points in R2 according to that atlas. But as I say, firstly, uh, there's the problem that the point might appear in multiple charts in a single atlas and therefore might be associated with multiple different coordinates even in a single atlas. And then there's the problem that you can change the atlas and therefore change the coordinates. So you have to understand that coordinates are completely with respect to a chart. Having said that about how meaningless they are, they still have incredible power because of course, R2 over here has a very natural algebraic structure that we can put on it, an algebraic structure that everyone's familiar with, the vector space structure of R2, uh, a vector space structure over the field of real numbers. Okay, and that means that we can potentially start to do algebra for our topological manifold by mapping all of the points here onto coordinates in R2. Okay, and that's the real power of coordinates, that it allows us to explore the structure of the manifold with algebra. And that's where this is going to go, but we're not going to say any more about that at the moment. Okay, so that's just the terminology of what is meant by coordinates with respect to a certain chart map. Okay, right. Now the final thing that I want to end with then is the concept of a chart transition map. And this is all about how to change coordinates between uh, two different charts. Okay, so a chart transition map. And we might as well use uh, this same picture that I've got here. So let's say we've got one chart here, which is this chart UX. And we've got this other chart here in red, which we'll call the chart U bar, let's say. So the chart domain here can be called U bar. And we'll have some chart map for this, which we'll call X bar here. Okay, and this, of course, um, this other chart map will also be mapping you onto R2. So I'll draw this here. So we'll have R2 here, and it will also be mapping you onto a open subset of R2, but it might be a completely different open subset as to over here. So I'll just colour this in here. And again, I've managed to draw this with 
a, a solid line rather than dashed lines. I'm just going to correct all of this by colouring it in, so we'll have these dashed purple lines to correct my mistake here. So this shouldn't contain its boundary, this shouldn't contain its boundary either, and both of these shouldn't contain their boundaries either as well. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, we now have this other chart here, for this other chart domain, uh, which is mapping you again onto a subset of R2. Okay, so we've got these two different charts, and of course we can see from the picture that they overlap. There is an overlap between their chart domains. So this overlapping portion we will call U, the chart domain of this first chart, intersect U bar. Okay, that's perfectly fine. U bar is the chart domain of our second map. So that portion there, the intersecting portion, we can just call U intersect U bar. Now for that portion where the two charts overlap, there are two possible coordinates that I can give to every point in there. I can either give the coordinates according to the first map or the coordinates according to the second map. And chart transition maps are all about changing coordinates between uh, using the coordinates from one chart and using the coordinates from the other chart for this intersecting portion. We can only do it for the bit that's intersecting. The bits where the, they aren't intersecting, obviously um, it, the different charts aren't relevant to those portions. Okay, so let's explore this more then. So this portion, U intersect U bar, that's going to look like a subset of this portion over here. Okay, so there'll be a subset of this portion over here, and let's say this bit is the image of U intersect U bar. So this is X, uh, U intersect U bar. So it's the image of U intersect U bar under the mapping X. So that's this sub-portion of this, because remember the entire thing is the image of just U here. Okay, and now this sub-portion of it is just the image of the U insect U bar portion. Okay, so I'll just colour that in in turquoise here. So that's the image of U insect U bar over there. And now, similarly, this is the image of the entire chart main U bar. So let's have a sub-portion of this denoting the image of U insect U bar. Okay, so this will be X bar of U intersect U bar. So the image of U insect U bar under X bar. Okay, so what I would now like to do is I'd like to start off with coordinates for all of the points in U intersect U bar in terms of the first chart, so with respect to the first chart, and I'd like to go to what those uh, points coordinates is uh, in the second chart, with respect to the second chart here. So I'd like to take a coordinate over here, so let's say x1, x2. Now this will refer to some point in U insect U bar, and I'd like to work out what the coordinate for that point is according to my second chart over here, which I'll call x1 bar, x2 bar. Okay, now what I want to point out to you is that that is doable. That is perfectly doable because all you have to do is go back along here, back into the real world here, okay, back into your actual topological manifold, and then go along here. Uh, back into a chart representation over here. Okay, so this map is just going to be exactly, if I just label this map up as x bar here, it's just going to be x bar after x inverse. So all you're going to have to do is firstly do x inverse to this point here, so you'll have to work x inverse on your coordinates uh, in, with respect to this first chart, that will take you back to some point in the topological manifold that's in U intersect U bar, and then you're going to have to act X bar on that to take that point into uh, its coordinates in this um, R2 over here, this subset of R2 according to the second chart. Okay, so this map here, X bar in uh, after X inverse, this is what's called the chart transition map. So I will underline this in turquoise, and the key thing that I want to show you about this chart transition map is that firstly, it is a map from R2 to R2. No mention of the topological manifold now, we don't need the topological manifold to understand this. This is a map from R2 to R2. Now that's exciting because this is just back to vector calculus now, potentially. Okay, we've got a map from R2 to R2, so there is the potential that we will be able to do calculus on that. Okay, so that we're not going to say any more about that, but that's where this is potentially going to go. In addition, what we do want to point out now is that this map is going to be a continuous map from here to here. And the reason is, is that 
this was a continuous map, x was a continuous map, remember it was a topological homeomorphism. This was a continuous map, it was again a topological homeomorphism. So in fact, this is going to be topologically homeomorphic to this, so certainly the two are going to be continuous. The non-rigorous, but in my opinion most intuitive explanation as to why that's true is that if this portion here is topologically homeomorphic to this, and it's also topologically homeomorphic to this, then all of these have to be utterly identical to each other, topologically speaking. Therefore, this one must be topologically homeomorphic to this. Okay, so clearly this map that goes from there to there is going to be continuous. Okay, in fact, it's going to be bi-continuous. More rigorously, this is a continuous map in both directions. So if we go the opposite direction, that's going to be a continuous map. Then going down here, that's another continuous map. And when you compose two continuous maps together, you end up with another continuous map. So this is going to be a continuous map. But then you can also argue that it'll be a bi-continuous map because the exact same argument in reverse holds true. Okay, so it will be a topological homeomorphism between this subset of R2 and this subset of R2. And that's what's known as the chart transition map. And the big thing to stress is that you don't actually need to know anything about the topological manifold here. It's just a map from one chart representation to another chart representation. Okay, we're changing coordinates which were with respect to one chart into coordinates which are with respect to another chart. Okay, and this is a nice map from R2 to R2, and we've studied maps from R2 to R2 for years and years and years in vector calculus. So we're happy, we, we, we know a lot about these, so we've reduced problems in the topological manifold here to vector calculus. Okay, and the hope is that we're going to be able to use vector calculus uh, to understand the topological manifold. So the hope here is that we're going to be able to use algebra and hopefully calculus to understand this topological manifold now uh, through the use of these charts and these coordinates with respect to charts. Okay, so we will call it there for this video. I hope that the idea of a topological manifold is now um, exciting you and that you have some idea, hopefully, of what it is. We will continue exploring this in uh, upcoming videos.